Yo guys, what's up? So, we are back in Subnautica, and I have some stuff for you that range from official content to modded content. I'm going to touch base with the modded content around the end of the video, so if you want the juicy official developers release this information, well, keep watching now, because that's what I'm going to jump into for official concepts the hovercraft and some notes from some of the developers over on the Subnautica Discord server as well. And, well, all of this is tied in with you getting to watch me do stupid stuff with torpedoes, because who doesn't like doing stupid stuff with torpedoes and hundreds upon hundreds of helpless fish? <laughs> Alright guys, as always, if you do enjoy Subnautica, remember to leave a like on this video, and let's get into it. So here's the deal. I've been looking down through the expansion wiki lately, and I came across a new image right here. And this was actually created by Corey Strader, I believe is how you say your last name, Corey. Sorry if I butchered that. And it shows a hovercraft in an Arctic place, but this is kind of weird because you see these weird, but let me just see the full size image of this because I actually haven't examined this yet. This is the first time I've seen this image like in full form. I've seen the thumbnail, that's it. But we have these weird ice... Uh, this is really deep blue stuff. Like, this is this doesn't look right. This looks like it might be something else. Unless it's just snow caked onto the side of it. I don't think it's precursor tech or anything like that. Regardless, the main focus is the hovercraft right here. Clearly, it's too slippery to walk around on the surface. And if it's windy on the surface too, well, it makes it even harder for you to walk around. There's a lot of things you got to take into account when it comes to the Arctic DLC and their ideas for weather, which they have confirmed they want to bring into the game, and a whole host of other things. You see, when it comes to the Arctic DLC, they're adding weather, which means storms, you know, yada yada yada, which also means wind must be a factor in the gameplay, because, well, wind is part of the weather. I would imagine if you're standing barefoot on the ice, which would be horrible for your feet, no doubt, but if you're standing barefoot on the, feet, on the ice or you just have crappy rubber boots, and you get hit by a, a severe gust of wind, what's going to happen to you if you have no grip? You know exactly what's going to happen. You're going to slide, right? Yeah, no, you're not You're not going to do a cartwheel, obviously, and land it. So I guess they'll have to have some iterations of vehicles. Now, this is subject to change. I just want to make it clear to you guys right now that this hovercraft we see right here is subject to change. Things may not be as they appear in the Arctic DLC. This is conceptual in nature. And it is subject to change at any point in time. Now, this clearly ties into the Arctic Mega Biome in general. And we can see the same theme going across the board. Uh, except, well, this one has the weird things. I'm assuming the biomes will have different diversity of life and different locations and different stuff uh, per spot. So, like, this is the Arctic Mega Biome, for, in for instance. But, like there's going to be different places in this said biome that will be different from like you go halfway across the map you're gonna have a different location basically and then this guy right here obviously completely different again i do like that they have these things reaching to the heavens these giant ice spikes i don't know how they would have been created though um like it's it's kind of weird because these don't look like they're naturally occurring like spikes of ice jetting through the through the um the surface of this layer right here they they look they don't look right because net i don't know it's just the way they're formed and the way they look and then the way they have these weird glowing like this does not look like ice this looks like something else some kind of glass maybe or something different i don't know there's anything could happen with this because of the precursors anything could be possible because of the precursors but again a lot of time may have ha may have passed since well all of this stuff formed so it makes sense if shelves were colliding and pushing other bits of ice up and stuff like that but this does not look na this nature didn't make this i don't think i think these are made from the precursors or something else or maybe there's a cool storyline for what would have happened with these structures in general I don't know. I need you guys to fill in the blanks. Let me know what you think down below in the comments section. This could tie into a lot of different stuff. Actually, there was something that I had noticed a while ago. Oh, by the way, um, where is it? Ah, oh, this right here. Yeah, the unknown fauna. Uh, there was a thing that I had to show you that was finalized. Um, I did get that confirmed. This squid shark right here. This is confirmed to be the final version of this creature. So 
if it does make it into the game's DLC, well, then this is how it's going to look. Anyways, with all that said, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section about the Arctic Spires and, I guess, the hovercraft in general. I really want to see the hovercraft, and I think it's going to be a cool addition. Uh, I also have to show you guys a quote-unquote new vehicle and a mod at the end of this video, so uh, if you're interested in that, you can check that out. But let's move into something else now. So this one actually kind of breaks my heart because I was really, really looking forward to it, but we'll get into why it breaks my heart in a second. So we actually understand the Icebreaker Reef back now and how it, I guess, broke through ice. So it evolved from the reef back. This creature cuts its way through packed ice to stay near surface plankton, and the weight is focused in front to crack pack ice. And then there's a cutting prow down right here. Uh, claw def uh, claws deflect ice from intake siphons right here. And then obviously what it does is it raises its body into the air and then it crashes down onto the ice, smashing through it with this cutting prow right here. I assume this is reinforced bow, a bone, and just a whole host of nastiness that you don't want to have come down on top of you. Now, the reason why this is so heartbreaking is because, well, one, I really liked the idea of this creature, and the reef back is just such a... Everyone knows what a reef back is, and it instantly tells them Subnautica. Well, it seems like the Arctic reef back, or the icebreaker, isn't making it into the DLC. Uh, as stated by Alex, an idea that didn't quite make it into the Subnautica DLC. An Arctic evolutionary cousin of the Reefback, able to use its bulk to crush packed ice and keep close to abundant surface plankton. Unfortunately, very unfortunately, we won't be seeing the Arctic Reefback unless there's popular demand or you guys speak out and say, Hey, we really want to see this. Why are you taking it from us? Yada, yada, yada. It's kind of upsetting, but there are a whole host of new creatures that are going to be just as cool to look at, if not cooler. So, I, mean, I guess you can't have it all, you know. It's whatever, I guess. This isn't really anything fancy. I just wanted to show you guys the early version of the seal or the Pinacardi, I think. And it obviously has changed greatly before. It just had, like, these giant flaps on its sides. It looked like a ghost ray. And then they chose the other, uh, the other one where it had the little flaps... Uh, on its sides and stuff. I mean, I think this design is a lot nicer than just having it with the ghost rays uh, stuff. Yeah, definitely a lot nicer to see it custom. Something else rumored that I wanted to bring up is this spike trap right here. Apparently, this thing might be coming to the DLC. I have nothing really to back it up, um, but there is talk right now that they want to animate this and make this trap part of the DLC. Ignore the Seamoth here with like its weird, I guess, tail and it looks like a stalker. This is from 2016. I don't know what they were doing there for that. If you have been around Subnautica for a long time and you know what they were trying to do with this, let me know in the comments section because I'm kind of curious. I don't know why they would make a Seamoth look like this unless it was just some iteration that they, I guess, let slide high. I, I don't know. Now here's something that kind of got to me a bit. This was shared a while ago, a couple weeks ago, and it flew under my radar because I've been doing a lot of stuff in my personal life lately. As you guys know, because uploads have been super sporadic and I've been skipping upload days and stuff, um, I'll give you guys an explanation or something like that later on, like a dedicated video or something. But anyway, not a big deal. Um, if you are subbed though, make sure you use the bell notification, turn post notifications on so you are up to date with what I do because you want to do that, right? Right. So anyways, this thing caught me off guard. This looks like some kind of ancient fish bird had its feathers plucked hybrid. I don't know. Like... It, it reminds me of the Mesmer, to be honest with you, with the intricate lights on it and around it, the way that it bushes out its its little spike underwater feather looking things. My guess would be that this thing it may possibly be related to the Mesmer to an extent. I feel like this thing might have some kind of effect like the mesmer but at the same time it might be entirely harmless and might not do anything at all to you my thoughts instantly go towards the mesmer the eyes remind me of the mesmer in a way the glowing feather like blades on its back remind me of the mesmer when it opens its body and kind of like draws you in with mind control stuff i don't, I don't know like 
this this one is weird this one gets really weird really fast i want to know what you guys think down below in the comment section there's nothing really that's that's giving it away right now the diver looks kind of perplexed and kind of confused but otherwise he doesn't really look too scared he's more curious than anything you can see it has some crazy face pincers going on let me just see the full size image yeah like this thing has some crazy beak like appendages going on uh it's got claws got a tail it can't go on land it doesn't seem it doesn't fly obviously it has some weird stuff going on up right here no there is it doesn't seem like this guy is much of a threat at all and i always look around in these images in the dark areas too because like you never know if they've hidden something down here or maybe this is part of a bigger being or something like that but it doesn't look like that's the case here the diver is using glow light obviously and some gear I assume underwater arctic gear so he doesn't freeze to death or she doesn't freeze to death since we will be female in the DLC. I don't know. It, it's... I, I don't... Until we know more, we won't know more. That's the problem. Guys, I'm gonna move out of this because I'm going into a bad area of speculation and nastiness. So this is gonna get you guys hyped beyond belief because I just came across this thanks to Obraxis over on the Subnautica Discord server. So... The first ever Subnautica expansion internal team playtest is underway this very moment. This is when we all try to simultaneously play the game start to finish and chat about the progress. There will be bugs. So clearly we see some of these alien penguins are already there. They're not completely done and I think there's going to be major iterations to this backdrop. I think this is just a placeholder until they make something far more intricate and I guess easier on the eyes. I'm so hyped to see this. I wish I had access to this, but this is internal only. This is the devs playing through it and trying to see what they can do with it. I seriously can't wait to hear what comes out of this. Now I'm gonna move into the final clips here from Corey Strader, which I, I would take these as sarcasm and seriousness. Take them half and half because I'm not really sure how much of this is what they really wanna do. So Corey actually said something about bobsleds you could craft and hook up to penguins, which would be kind of cool, meaning those alien penguins. Uh, well, they might have a use after all, unless this is just sarcasm, and well, that's, that's whatever, yada yada. After about a minute in deep snow, your exhaustion meter will fill up and you'll lay down and die. <laughs> oh my god. So obviously that's sar sarcasm. You don't want an exhaustion meter that does that. I think an exhaustion meter would be kind of cool to limit you on how fast you progress through things, but I feel like laying down and die isn't on my list of things I wanna do. And then they make mention of slipping all over with no movement control with ice and snow and stuff, which I think is actually a really good direction to go. I think if he's being 100% serious with this whole no movement control thing on ice, I think that's I think that's a really good idea. And then like you could use cleats or something on your shoes to really, I guess, make moving a little bit easier. You guys let me know what you think down below in the comment section on everything Corey has had to say here. This is where the official information stops. This is also where the modded section of this video starts. So if you want to watch the cool modded stuff, the custom submarine being made for the game, um, which I have screenshots of and some other cool stuff like a, a, a forklift you can drive. <laughs> well, keep watching. So now that we're done with that, there's two things I actually want to show you guys. And <laughs> one of them is actually kind of cool because it was added because of us. Um, so if you go over to the seeds fabricator and you make a giant cove tree seed, which by the way, the link to this mod is in the description of this video, uh, along with a whole host of things that come with the mod, obviously. Um, but here's the deal. Apparently, if we use this cove tree that we have right here, the seed, and we plant it in a outdoor grow bed at at least 100 meters under the ocean, so we can do that and... Oh, hi. How you doing? Yeah, that was fun. Let's put this in here. We're 150 meters down. We're over 150 meters down, actually. That's gross so let me just fast forward to make sure it didn't spawn it all right hove tree so if i'm correct this should spawn a ghost leviathan we have eggs in here right now these guys got to go away we have eggs in there right now ghost leviathan eggs that are actually working 
and I've set this so after a minute of it being fully grown it should allow the spawn of a ghost leviathan now I'm not sure if it'll be a juvenile or fully grown I'm gonna wait around for a little bit and I guess I'll see in a moment what happens with it so that tree isn't actually spawning a ghost leviathan right now which is weird but I think I <laughs> I think, I think I bugged it out. Um, so, because I use the day cheat to basically speed things along. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to place one down right here. And why did it? Okay. Uh, and I'll plant these right here like that. And that should let it grow and do its thing naturally and organically instead of, you know, doing it forced with the day cheat because it could bug it. But we will, we will move into something else now. I want to go back to my base. Because I'm going to show you something real quick. So in this mod, right here, we have all these items. Obviously, you can spawn in the Leviathan remains, which now have bones and skeletons and stuff. There's a whole bunch of different stuff here. But something cool is these picture frames. They're customizable picture frames. And actually, if you hold E, for instance, you can adjust the size and make it smaller or bigger. Let me just... There we go. If you hold R, you can rotate it, which is cool. And if you hold F... You can change the border entirely. Something else that I thought was cool was these lockers. They add some personality to the game, I guess, in a way. And, well, if you're messy, you can leave them like that and have a picture of your sweetheart back home in the in the thingy. Anyways, this forklift right here. Well, wait, how big can that... Oh, my God. That's not healthy. There we go. Um, this forklift actually has a little secret. And I'm going to show you the little secret now. And I need to make sure that you guys know... Right now, I'm the only person with this, and that was given to me by a person called Duckfat on Discord, the mods creator. And, well, this plays into something else, and everything is really early, and this is a preview. So it's going to be buggy, it's going to be weird, but we're going to do it. Okay, so you could traverse the ocean in your fancy little seamoth doing whatever seamoths do, or you could roll out your little mobile vehicle bay jump up on top of it and make yourself a fancy little c4 <laughs> yep that's 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 a thing that's <laughs> that's a thing so the modder actually wanted to test new custom vehicles this this plays into something guys this plays into something so because there's, there's a new vehicle they're working on obviously but they decided they wanted to mess around with vehicles. And, well, this is a vehicle. Here's the upgrade panel they actually attach to it. You can upgrade your C4. And you can also move it around. Let me just switch to day real quick. Bam. So I assume that's I assume that's a bug because, well, it's super early access. Uh, they said not to use any... Um, ow. Damn. They said not to use any torpedoes because they don't fire from the right location yet and stuff like that. And again, it's super early access, but we're actually driving around a forklift underwater right now. Oh, it played the animation again. But again, it's it's super like early access. Like this is very early. Come on, get up. There we go. Wait, can I ram into this guy here? I, it'd be cool if we had like a third person view. I think that'd be really cool. Or uh, some kind of like camera where we could move around and just see what it looks like when we're inside this thing. I, I mean, I could pre-cam it, but I won't be able to move around. Oh my god, we're actually... Oh no, we're not sitting in it correctly. Are, are we? No, we're not. Our hips are like on the <laughs> footstep, whatever. That's kind of cool. And it has the bubbles too behind it. That's kind of cool. I'm surprised they put that kind of detail into it. Uh-oh, I think I crashed my game. So I want to know what happens... If I try to park this thing in a Cyclops, that'd be kind of comical to see a forklift in the body of a Cyclops. Let me just see if this actually works. Uh, huh? Where's it? Where, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Uh, where'd it go? All right, let's see if we can actually park the C4 in the Cyclops. I feel like it's not going to work. Are you going to open? Oh, my God. It act okay, it opened the hangar doors. Is it going to work? Oh my god. It picked it up. Holy crap, we have a forklift in our in our in our Cyclops. Hang on a second, I gotta see this from down below. Oh my god. <laughs> you could totally do like some work underneath it. Oh, and there's a power cell too. I didn't even know that was in that. Oh, that's so cool. 
Oh my god, custom vehicles are going to be so cool when they actually get them, like, figured out and put into the actual uh, mod. Now, I want to move into something else. Because they actually have a completely custom submarine in the works. It's, like, pre-pre-alpha, obviously. It could uh, not even make it into the game, obviously. But um, just, just so you guys know, everything is subject to change. It could be completely white. But let's get into this new, quote-unquote, submarine. So this is the thing that they're modeling right now. This is the submarine that they're basing off of the Seamoth. But it's, the, like, I need, I need <laughs> so many things. So this is a very early, like, pre-alpha look at it. They're remaking it again. They're going to redo a lot of the stuff on it, but this will be in an additional drivable vehicles mod or something made by Duckfat and this other person too. Um, this is actually the concept right here of it and it actually being a thing under the water and, you know, yada, yada, yada. It's not going to be too fancy. It'll be a nice alternative to the Seamoth. I'm wondering how the interior is going to look. I'm curious to see how they hook up the animations, how the thrusters look, where all the upgrade stations will be, what upgrades are actually available for it, and what's ultimately going to happen with this thing when it's put into the mod. You can see right here, again, another 3D render of it, and another 3D render of this thing again. It's looking pretty cool, and I can only imagine how cool it's going to look in its final state once they redo this one more time and see what they can actually do and push the envelope with their skills as modders. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, let me know your thoughts down below about the custom submarine, if they should make any changes to it, and uh, what features it should have. So that's basically it for now on everything to do with Subnautica modded and official. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section on everything that you have seen and what you think custom vehicles will do for the world of Subnautica. Do you want to see custom vehicles in the Arctic DLC? Will we have a chance to see the Atlas submarine fully modeled and modded into the game? Maybe I can put these modders in contact with the creator of the Atlas submarine. And with the model and their modding experience, maybe they can put it into the game. That'd be kind of cool. I'm going to see if I can do that. Let me know if you think I should do that. Some things should probably be left alone. <laughs> All right, guys, leave a like if you did enjoy this video, and I will see you in the next one.